Hey everyone, Michael Crump here. Today we're going to talk about the Boot Me and several of the options that you can turn on with it. We're going to be taking a look at using it with the regular standard Wii and then with another Wii that they called the Wii Mini. Okay, so here I am. I am logged into Windows in this instance and I've just pulled up the disk management tool. I need to format that disk. Currently it is uh, an existing format. I'm just going to change it right here to FAT32. We're going to perform a quick format and then press OK. And now at this point that disk is formatting and in just a moment it will be complete. OK, so I think that's it for the USB disk. And again, you can use one of pretty much any size. Okay, so now I went ahead and I went over to the bootme.org website. Now you're going to want to take a click on download. Then you'll see there is a Hack Me Installer version 1.2 that's out. I went ahead and I downloaded that. And what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to get ready to extract that file to our local hard disk drive. So here it is. I'm just going to right click and take an extract here. And we're going to go inside of that and double click again. And there we are. You can also check out there are different types of notes that explain a little bit more about what is the tool, how best to use it, as well as some instruction notes. But I have you covered if you just stay tuned to this video. Okay, so I have a USB drive and a local hard disk drive. In this instance, I copied the boot.elf, but if you're going to run this on possibly a regular Nintendo and a Wii Mini, you may want to go ahead and copy all of the files. So all of those files could just be copied to the root directory and it would be okay. And this machine is Kali Linux 2021.2. Now, you don't have to use Kali. The reason I use Kali is if you look on my stream on Twitch or my YouTube channel, I do a lot of work with Kali. So I just used it because I already had it ready and installed. So once you have your Linux distribution, you're going to want to bring up a terminal. Now, keep in mind, there is some alternatives if you only have Windows or Mac. One of those alternatives is, is that you could use Linux to boot onto maybe a CD or maybe even a thumbstick. So there's a couple of options here. The main thing that you're just going to want to make sure of is, is that your computer or the computer that you're using with this, the Bluetooth is working properly. Okay. Back over to the terminal, I'm just going to make a temp directory here, and now we're going to change directory into it. And we're going to run this wget command. Um, all that is simply doing is, is that that is going out to that GitHub website, it's downloading that script, and then it's saving it to your local hard disk. And we'll clear out of that. And now we need to fix up the file permissions. Uh, this is the permission that's going to allow you to execute it. And now you'll want to run a sudo and then a dot slash blue bomb dash helper dot sh. So we're taking a Wii first, so I'm going number one. And in this instance, it's asking what's our version number? Well, since I know that the version that my Wii is on is 4.3, there's also instructions uh, for you to go out to and to take a look at if you're not sure what that version number is. If you're in North America, you've had the Wii for a little while, it's probably been through a few updates, more than likely you're on 4.3. And the last question here is going to be, do you wish to proceed? Since we're very well aware of the risk, we're going to hit yes. Finally, you'll see where it says waiting to accept. Now, the magic that's going to be going on here is, is that on your Wii console, you're going to be uh, tapping the button that allows you to connect your controllers. Basically, it is Bluetooth. 
And as you tap that, this application is going to pick that up and it's going to send a payload that you can use to run exploits on the machine. Over here is actually what that Wii was looking like as you saw that accepting. So I was hitting that red button like crazy and then the payload was sent and we are in business if you see this screen. So you'll see trying to init USB device and then mounting it and then you'll see the screen. And when you see this software must not be sold, then you are in great shape. So it's gonna ask you to press one, which is what I did so here. And now we can take a few options here. So this is the Hack Me installer. We're gonna go up and we're going to install the Homebrew channel. This is pretty much a given at this point. Homebrew channel is gonna allow us to download other Homebrew applications. Okay, it's giving us a couple of different options here. So we can install boot me as boot two. We can also install boot me on iOS. And iOS is an Apple operating system as well as it is Nintendo's Wii operating system name, which is just iOS. What we're going to do on this machine, since these will require an SD card, is, is that we're going to prepare an SD card. I'm just gonna say yes and continue, and then another continue here. So now our SD card is ready to go. And I'm gonna select the install to the iOS. It says insert a card, continue, and there we go with the install boot me, iOS now. And that is now successful as well. Okay, I believe we can head on back to the main menu and now exit on out. Okay, and so here is the homebrew channel. Now, it's not connected to a network, um, but you can see there's a few options here. If it was connected to a network, you would have some more options. We just chose the shutdown option. Here we go, we're seeing our signing in and we have a homebrew channel down there at the very bottom. So we'll click on that. We'll just shut down this system because I think we are a bit done with this original Wii. So I just went right back into the application that we were in and this time I'm taking option number two for a Wii Mini. And then number one, because I am in America, and then I type in yes here, and here we are again. We are at the waiting to accept screen. And here again, I am pressing the button, the red button that connects the controllers to the Wii um, very quickly on my Wii Mini console. You'll see that in just a moment. Okay, there it goes. And again, the same exact uh, response and reply that you just saw when the payload was sent to the standard Wii or the regular Wii. Uh, that's going to be it on this screen. So let's go ahead and let's switch over and take a look at why the Wii Mini is so interesting. Okay, so here is a Wii, and there's a couple of things uh, to note here. Uh, number one is, is that, as you can see, there is the red button that you will be needing to press. On the regular Wii, you did need to actually um, uh, open up the SD card slot, but in this model, there was no SD card slot, so they just put it on the side. On the back, there's all of those standard cables or connections, except for over here on the USB port, there's only one, and then in the regular Wii, there was two. And then again, nothing on the front. So I just simply pulled all of the cables and cords out from the regular Wii and put them into the Wii Mini and decided let's try this again. So there's the console, and I am rapidly pressing that red button. 
it takes many times. If you can't get it to work, uh, you know, you can always unplug, plug it back in, and so forth. I finally got this to work, and again, there's our credits, and there is the message. And then finally, it's going to ask us again to press the number one on our controller, which you can do so. And again, here we are. Now, a couple of things that's interesting here. It says the Homebrew channel can be installed, but then it says Boot Me can only be installed as an iOS. And that's mainly because it does not have an SD card. And we're going to install the Homebrew channel just like we just did. And we're going into the boot me and we're just going to go install psych. There's no SD card. So we actually can't do any of that since there's no SD card slots. Like what, 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 where's the SD card slot? It's nowhere on that. Uh, so let's go back to no, take me back. And let's just go ahead and exit to the main menu and exit out of this. And again, it can't write to the SD card as there is not one. So we could exit out here, get back to our system menu and keep in mind that the Wii Mini does not have a way to connect to the internet. Now with this, with this tweak, uh, what you would be able to do is you would be able to uh, open the homebrew channel and there's ways to load an Ethernet adapter. And then you could use simply a USB to Ethernet adapter. And then plug in a network cable and get Wii. And you'd be able to get internet on the Wii Mini. So thank you very much for listening in. Um, I've spent quite a bit of work playing and learning with this video. And I would greatly appreciate it. If you could maybe drop me a like and then especially a comment. I'd love to hear from each and every one of you as there's many consoles left to hack. Thanks again. Bye-bye.